Hello? Authority protects you. See, if you allow this authority to protect you, as pornography can protect you, as fear can, can protect you from standing ashamed. You know, this fear in you, and that is a final authority. Fear of rejection. Now you must do everything good. What is that authority over your life? My brother, my sister, my friend. But you are playing it according to some other authority, and there's only one authority that you're really going to give you freedom eternally. And this is this word. But you are standing under authority, each one of you. <clears throat> Good. Are we there? Yes. First one was? That is called? Second one is? That is? Freedom. Third one is? That is? So, in that all... <coughs> I'm challenged with precepts and commands to walk in obedience. In the Afrikaans, praat van bevele. Laws and commandments was die wette en die geboeie. Om te gehoorzaam was bevele. The English translated with precepts and commands. It's now the fact of the policeman coming out there and saying, Sorry, you need to obey this. This is the law that you're supposed to obey. This is the law. This is the freedom that you have according to the law. Hello? This is the strategy on the left hand side. You keep line left, pass right, and 120 so you go. But now it's enforced. This is how you will do it. Finish. I command you to do, it, to do it now like that. You still have a choice. You with me? But obedience is the next step. Obedience. I submit to the authority. I find the freedom to do according to the authority. Amen. I receive the strategy and now I walk in obedience with that. Amen. This is the whole interaction of definition of word. What word is all about. That's number four. Number five, ordinances and statutes. Insetringen and verordeningen. That is God's principles. According to these principles, law was given. Government have certain principles. And a principle is maybe abortion is okay. Therefore, based on that principle, they formulate the law. You with me? So there's principles that you go with. There's principles in this word. The principle of this word is the heart of God. And to express the heart of God, God gave through this authority. Through this authority, I will give the principles of my word, of my heart. The principles of who I am. And that principles you will have for yourself. If you cannot see that principles, it will be hard for you. Hello? And then the word can be hard. The word can be hard because I don't understand why. And many times by faith we just have to go, even though we don't understand here. But if by faith I know I understand that my Father loves me, even though I don't understand here, I understand here. That my Father is the best for me. He loves me. If He disciplines me, it's so that He can purify me in the holy fire. Amen? Then I understand the word. Authority that gives me freedom for strategies to be obeyed according to God's principles. According to God's principles. According to His statutes, His ordinances. The principles in, his, in who He is. Amen. Amen. That's number five. Ordinances and statutes. So that the word is also judgments. What is that all about? Judgments. The word will judge you. If you don't allow, allow this authority now and bow before this authority, one day you will bow and judgment will be severe. As we said, God will not judge you, the word will judge you. 
you with me. So that judgment will be severe in that day. But rather allow the judgments of God today. And that is mentoring. That is mentoring in your life. That is called discipleship. Somebody watching over your soul. I'm watching you. Your pastor must watch you. You go wrong, I better watch you. No. I better watch you, and if you go wrong, trouble. Okay. Trouble for your flesh. Discipline for beauty. Amen. Amen. Just say, I want to be a beautiful sheep. Just tell your neighbor, you can be a very beautiful sheep. You are not in the flesh. <laughs> Chloe, just say you can try to be a beautiful sheep. Just say it to him. <laughs> okay, whatever. What are we saying? Judgments is to be mentored. So what are we saying? First one is laws and? Come on. Second one is? Third one is? Crying his hands. Ways and paths. Third one is? No, that was the fourth one now, man. <laughs> okay. Fifth one is? Sixth one is? Judgments. So, with the first one, laws and commandments, it is the authority of God that you take in your life. This is that facet of the word. Before you can do anything with the word, you receive his authority. And you, and you decide, I will take the word as the authority. Amen. So that secondly, I, through this authority, I'm set free for God's purposes in my life. I'm set free to be free in Him. Amen. I'm not bound by sin. I'm not bound by rubbish. I'm not bound by my emotions. I'm not bound to live like a baboon. But I will live from my spirit and truth. Truth. Amen. Truth. Okay. Truth sets me free. This government sets me free. I'm not in jail by government. But I have a good government. And the king of this government, the president of this government, setting me free by his truth. There's a second one. So that thirdly, I can follow the strategy of this government. This government released me into freedom to follow this strategy into this nation. And for that I need to obey this government that sets me free in this strategy to obey. Amen. So that fifthly, that was obedience. According to the principles. So, if I am in this uh, country and um, there is no abortion, no laws of abortion, amen. It's saying you can do it. Oh, that's government that is setting me free from that rubbish that, that can happen. Hello? Are you with me? So that I follow a strategy where I can close down all these clinics. And I'm obeying according to the law with authority. I've been released. I'm free to do that. I will not be caught. Okay? Why? Because of certain principles, statutes that the government is standing for. You with me? And then the people see what type of nation we are. But if authority says, do whatever you want, I set you free to do whatever vulgar rubbish you want to do. I'm released for that. And my strategy is to do whatever vulgar rubbish thing I want to do. So that in that I have that vulgar strategies that I obey that strategies so that the principles of this country and this government is seen that is so absolutely pathetic. In what nation, under what government do you stand? Who's your king? From what kingdom? Under the governance of God? Or some other, other governance? You will see it according to your life and what is coming out of it. But under some other governance you will be, hopefully, the Word. 
because nothing else is going to stand in your life. Nothing, nothing, nothing. And may it collapse tonight in Jesus' name. That part that is not from Him, so that you can wake up and build effectively. Amen. And get into that what is eternal. Hallelujah. I'm trying to follow myself. Are you with me? Yes. If I don't know where I'm going, you will tell me. <laughs> what is that? Okay. According to God's principles, that's His ordinances and statutes. And fifthly, so that in this, when I have this heart, this whole process, that I'm mentored in it. That there will be judgment when I walk out of it. And judgment is so utterly protection. Protection. There will be judgment when you go <coughs> on the right-hand side of the road and all the cars must just... <coughs> because you are just coming at 200 kilometers an hour, there will be judgment for the protection of everybody on the road. And even it could be for your own life. In judgment, there is protection. At the end of the day, it's not protection. But for today, it is protection. If you can allow the judgment of God on your life, the discipline, somebody telling you in your face, stop that nonsense. And you keep on, and you need to be accountable to that person the whole time. That is protection. But because we saw it in a negative light, in our parents' homes or with some other leader, that is control. We are not set free. There's a car in the making. And you know there's some guys, they're putting on wheels. According to what they believe. That guys are controlling the car. They're putting on the wheels. They're putting on the... Yeah. They're putting on all those things. They are controlling me. You are a spiritual car, but nobody can touch you, you know. You go with your flat tire, and you will go with your flat tire for the rest of your life. Because you, know, you cannot trust somebody close to you. You cannot give that wheel over for somebody else to control that wheel and put a new wheel on. Put something in there and gear you up here. That is just, that is just wrong. Freaky Christians. But no one anymore like that. In Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> the Lord must help us. Amen. Amen. I hope you have someone, some other mechanic that you allow to work on you. Where the car is not jumping off and saying, no, you cannot do that. I don't allow you to do that. <laughs> if the one wheelie's up there when JP did all the cars, all four... I don't know if we just wanted to brag about it, but he would put the car up there and there's no wheels on nowhere. <laughs> Not even a steering wheel. <laughs> and sometimes yeah, you can feel be, be very exposed because you can go nowhere because all the wheels came off. Hopeful or not because of the crash, but because of somebody that is mentoring you. Somebody that is checking up the car like JP so that these guys going on tour are safe. Hello. You know who's that person. And when that person says, you're not driving with that car now. Your life is not driving around now. You stop right here and you are here now and we're going to change the scenes in your life. So that you as a car can at least not have a destiny to crash within seven days. Because of some pathetic thing that is wrong in you as a car. Uh, is it so? Yeah. Yeah. Judgments to be mentored. Next one was promises. promises. Oh, yes, the promises only. Promises that if you then, in his laws and commandments that set you free in truth, to walk in the ways and paths in obedience. Okay, amen, where you react on his word so that according to his ordinances and his discipline on your life, you can understand his promises to be fulfilled in you. Amen. amen. And what is his promises? For you to have an excellent, fulfilled life. 
Oh, God wants you to have an excellent fulfilled life, but it's all, if it's all about you, it will never happen. But your fulfillment will be in Him and in Him alone. And in Him and with Him and through Him. Yes, God is very practical. It's just religion that is not practical. Religion is bondage. But God is a very, very practical God. Trillions times more than me and you. you. The more intimate you are with Him, the more practical you get. The more intimate with a demon of religion, the more spirit, super spiritual you will get. The Word. Talking about the Word. The Word is the promises. The promises for an excellent fulfilled life. The last one. Testimonies. An excellent fulfilled life that always honoring the author of this authority, Jesus Christ. Testimonies of Him as the living Word. My life is a testimony about the living Word. I testify about the living Word. If people open this book, remember last week? Anybody was here? The letter? Okay. Open this book, they see the living Word. My life is living. There's something eternal living in me. And they can see it in my walk. They can see it in what I do. God have mercy on us that that will be true. That so we will live. Amen. Can we see that line? Can somebody see this line? Okay. There we go again. First one is... Laws and commandments, authority over your life, and you take that authority, you submit to that authority, not your own authority, not other authority. And that authority sets you free, freedom through the word as? Truth. Truth. Free to do according to this authority. Amen? So that thirdly, I can get onto a road onto a strategy, I'm released out of this jail, onto this road, onto the strategy that I now need to obey. Because this is a command, a precept that is just compelling me into a place of standing accountable, you better obey now. That's number four, obedience. So that in that number... According to his ordinances, statutes, his principles. This is because of his principles that I will do it. And for this number, what? So that in this I'm all mentored. Amen. I'm mentored by his judgments. And people looking at me, putting judgment on my flesh, telling me straight. This is wrong in your life. Change. Thank you, God, for your mercy that I change this now. Amen. That guy's always telling me what I'm doing wrong. You take your car to the to that guy, and he's putting this car up there, looking in the engine, looking everywhere, looking the wheels. He's always picking on all my mistakes and my faults. He better be. Because if the wheel is going like that, no, no, just give him mercy, give him grace, man, leave that wheel like that. Don't speak to him about that wheel, you know? Is that love? Is that grace? You better have somebody that is not just coochie, 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 everything is fine. But tell you, your, that wheel is, has a very big buckle in it. Why are you so loud? There's a hole in the silencer. And it's not the voice that God gave you. It needs to be fixed. <laughs> Hello. Are you with me? I don't see you. Hallelujah. This is one of the most important ones. This judgment. There is God's love. If he loves you, he will discipline you. He's, that judgment will be on your life. Hallelujah. For what? So that you can have this excellent, fulfilled life. Why? Because this excellent, fulfilled life must honor him. You get a lot of excellent, fulfilled lives out there, but they are not honoring him. 
They are honoring the authority under who they stood all the way. Whether it would have been them, themselves. I'm my authority and I set myself free according to my strategies. Hello? To, obedient, to be obedient according to my authority and what I see in, in my strategies. Okay? So that in that I will mentor myself in my excellence of how I do it. Hello? According to the principles that I believe. And with that I can have a successful life. Yes, you can. But when he's weighed with a word, it will just be, it's gone. That success is gone. When the storm comes, the house is on sand. Very excellent house. But because on sand, you saw tsunamis. And when that tsunami comes in, when the enemy comes in like a flood, that house is just gone. You cannot believe that there was houses even there. How excellent with the best furniture or whatever you built your life with. The enemy sends one disturbance on earth. And there's a wave and you're gone. Finish. Your life is gone. Or you've built on the rock. You've built with a word. The enemy comes in like a flood. It will be just a testimony that will be uh, unto his glory, the author of the authority that you have, the author of the stability that you have. So God will send the tsunamis in your life. Why? So that he will get the glory of what is built in your life. How the people will see that you've built on the rock, you've built with the word, you love the word, you kept the word, you obeyed the word, you followed the word, you, everything, the word, 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 word. Amen? This is your uttermost safety and your testimony and your way and your authority and your freedom. All of this. And it will happen more and more and more and more and more in this earth. Because the nations need to see the answer is the church. The church that is built on the word and built in the word and from the word and with the word. Who is in love with the word and comes out of the word and speak forth the word. Ma. Amen. Amen. You come from government and you say, so it will be. And that's the way it will be. When you come in his will, so it will be. Let my people go. And then it's just frogs and mosquitoes and whatever until he says yes. But the frogs and the mosquitoes was not over the nation of God. Let there be frogs, mosquitoes and all that rubbish over your flesh. In Jesus' name. So that we are set free. So that we are set free. The firstborn that also talked about the fruit of your flesh, the fruit of your bondage. The last one of the ten. Let the fruit of your bondage die. Please, Lord, in my life. The fruit of the Pharaoh in me, let it die. By your mercy, so that I can go to the mountain where you bring me on eagle's wings unto yourself. Mm. Amen. Amen. Yes, man. Hallelujah. Excellent, fulfilled life that is always honoring the author of the authority. That is the living word. The living word. Go and read Psalm 119. Will you? Hallelujah. Can I just give you some... You're going to mark that 51, but I just need to read you four or five of them. Okay. 